Hey everyone. Today, we're diving into the secrets of increasing longevity through diet, inspired by the groundbreaking work of Dr. David Sinclair. Could the key to a longer, healthier life be on your plate? Let's find out. Uh, for most of those markers, I'm better than a 20-year-old for, for health. I've looked at my blood biochemistry and I'm actually now younger and healthier than I've ever been. Dr. David Sinclair, a renowned professor of genetics at Harvard Medical School, has spent decades researching the mechanisms of aging and how we can potentially slow it down. His findings suggest that diet plays a crucial role in extending our lifespan and improving our health span. One of the central themes in Sinclair's research is the idea that certain dietary patterns can activate longevity genes and promote cellular health. Let's break down some key elements of this longevity diet. I'm an experimenter. I, I love dairy. I, I was eating a lot of cheese and red wine. My diet two or three days a week was a cheese board and a couple of glasses of red wine. And I looked at my blood biochemistry and I'm actually now younger and healthier than I've ever been since I've been measuring it over a decade. Now it's more like 14 years. And I can plot various parameters, testosterone, glucose. Uh, the list goes on inflammation, uh, blood type, blood cell composition. And uh, for most of those markers, I'm better than a 20 year old for, for health. And, uh, and I think a lot of that's due to my new diet that I've adopted because I can just see things getting better and better over time. Because sometimes people say, I can never give up alcohol, I could never give up meat. It's not true. And so I, I, at least I found it not to be true. First thing I cut out was a lot of carbohydrates. I used to eat bread every day. I would just put, if I ate something, it would be on toast. Okay, that, that's my life. I cut that out and have found immediate improvements in my biochemistry levels particularly my glucose levels. The next thing I cut out was uh, was meat. I, I worked towards a, a Mediterranean diet, had fish, and eventually now I'm I'm no meat. And and that improved my numbers even better. Cholesterol, um, what do you call it, triglycerides all came down. And I have a familial history, genetics of heart, heart disease. I have what's called LP little a high levels. LP little a is the worst. You know, about 30% of us have this and we're destined, if we don't do something, to have a, a short lifespan. But though that was very important, was the cutting out meat. And it's not just the protein, it's also the fat that comes along with the steak and whatever that I was eating. And then the third change was the, the dairy. I did that just to see what would happen. I figured it wouldn't matter. I'm not allergic to dairy. I'm not lactose intolerant. But it did have an effect. It made things even better. And what I think is going on, Shane, is that I was eating a large amount of protein, not just fat, but eggs and all that stuff. And um, and now that I have less protein, I think that mTOR pathway that's really important for longevity um, in animals and probably people is really kicking in in a way that had never done so before. Well, I don't like plants. Um, I, I mean, I'm, I, I'm now learning how to enjoy plants, but for me, they were a side dish. But it, here's the thing, uh, there's a lot of debate, especially on social media, about meat versus plants. I would love meat to be lifespan extending. That would be heaven. But it's not. You just look at those populations and people that live a long time, they are generally smaller yeah. women who don't eat much, who eat vegetarian. I mean, that's the fact. We can debate it all day, but there, there are these scientific facts that we have to pay attention to. Uh, so we've discovered a group of longevity genes that are called sirtuins and they control how fast we age. And what we've discovered is that there are molecules in foods that we eat that activate these defenses in our body uh, that these genes control. So two and one gene makes an enzyme that protects the body. It's activated chemically, physically by a couple of really interesting molecules. One is resveratrol, which a lot of people know me for that discovery. That's in the red wine molecule. Um, but more recently, another lab discovered that uh, oleic acid, which is produced when we, we're hungry and our fat breaks down, but also we can get oleic acid from uh, olive oil, avocados, uh, nuts. And it may be that the, the benefits we get from those foods are largely because those foods are turning on our defense pathways against aging. What's interesting is that there was a really big study by the Adventist Health uh, Group 2013. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about that because what they calculated was the chance of dying based on various diets. 
And this, these were thousands of people. And what they found was that what's called the hazard ratio went down the more vegetarian and vegan you were. What does that mean? Your chance of dying goes down. And the number goes from zero to one. Whereas one it is you're pretty likely to die tomorrow. Whereas a low number, which is around 80, means you've got 20% less chance of dying on any given day with this hazard ratio. So the numbers are the following. Non-vegetarians are at one, if you call that one. Compared to that, uh, the next best one uh, was semi-vegetarians at 0.92 and octolovo or lacto-ovo vegetarians 0.91. Okay, so about a, almost a 10% reduction in mortality, death. And then you get into uh, vegans with 0.85, so that's 15% reduction in death. And then the best one was pesco vegetarian. So getting a little bit of meat. A little bit of fish. Yeah, a little bit of meat from fish. Probably the, the fish oils in there are beneficial. And then you're down to 0.81. So that's a 19% reduction in your chance of death at any given day late in life. I know it sounds a little bit repetitive, but it, it is individual, but you can make some generalizations. So first of all, the individual differences are obvious. There's your body type, but also your gender. And I think just as important, your physique. If you are into bodybuilding or you're an athlete professionally, that's very different than someone like me who's just using their brain and their fingers to make a living. So that there's that consideration. And there are, there are hacks that I'm helping develop that allows you to be in the adversity state, which is what we were describing, eating less, consuming less protein. And that's the adversity state that's longevity, but then have periods where you can have an abundant state. Um, and so perhaps you know, I would suggest trying on days that you work out, assuming you're not a professional athlete, um, having some extra protein, eat, eat a little bit of fish, for example, but mostly for that adversity state you want to be focused on plants why is that because plants have less available amino acids your body has to work harder to get them out but they also have a ratio of amino acids that turns on some of these uh, defenses that i'm talking about a very important one is called mTOR little m capital tor and it's there to sense how much protein you're taking in and if it's always sensing that you're eating protein it will not uh, turn on the survival pathway that leads to longevity. So you'll look good if you're always eating protein because your body is, yeah, I got plenty of energy. Let's go for it. Let's grow. But if you never have that state of want, that adversity, um, I'm convinced and the data shows it from population studies that a carnivorous diet isn't longevity, isn't a longevity producing diet in the, in the long run, right? But, but in the short run, of course, you'll feel better. Uh, and a lot of people argue with me saying, I feel great. How could this be wrong? But, you know, remember, life is long. You want to look look at ways that will extend your lifespan two, three, four decades from now. But I think you can have both. I think that it's all about pulsing it, doing adversity, and then occasionally having the abundance as well. So the, the amazing thing about the state of knowledge of humanity right now is that over the last few thousand years, humans have figured out to eat less often. There are states of fasting. Most religions do that, but also the types of foods. Uh, Mediterranean diet is a good example. There's a Okinawan diet, which is a you know, Japanese island that has mostly plants um, and a little bit of fish, but mostly it's not overeating and there's not huge amounts of animal fat and animal products and dairy in a typical long-lived population uh, that I just described. So that we've known for a long time and you know, it, it's crazy that we're debating this. Mediterranean diet is just known to be healthy and vegetarian and vegan diets are also conducive to longevity. But the other thing that's amazing about our state of knowledge is that people like me have discovered genes that control aging. Sirtuins are the ones that we work on, this mTOR gene that I mentioned. Those diets are turning on those defenses uh, that we discovered not because we were studying diets, because we were studying yeast cells and worms and fruit flies. But now we understand in this unified theory of aging that by eating these types of foods, you're making the body think that times are tough, turning on the defenses that for the long run will be conducive to longevity and forestall these diseases that will kill us. And in the short run, you'll actually feel better. Um, and in the term, in terms of um, body composition, you'll actually look better too. Uh, the other reason to be focusing more on plants is that they make molecules that are very healthy for us. And... Again, we scientists have figured out 
that those molecules aren't just being antioxidants. You know, that's the theory of the 1980s. What we've realized is that in, in addition to be, being antioxidants, they actually turn on those longevity pathways, the sirtuins. They work on mTOR. There's another one called AMPK, which senses blood sugar and energy. And by eating plants that, in general, make these molecules, and especially plants that are stressed themselves or have adversity, which heightens the amount of these molecules uh, production, we can ingest them and trick our bodies into thinking that there is adversity, right? We've evolved, I believe, this is my theory with Conrad Howitz, is that we're sensing the plant world and when our food supply might run out, we need to defend our bodies against uh, the environment and that leads to longer life. And the theory came from our discovery that resveratrol from red wine and 19 other plant molecules that are produced by plants when they're stressed turn on these sirtuin defenses. And we're trying to figure out how is that possible? Is it just a coincidence? And then we came up with this theory that we've evolved to sense our food supply. Remember, diet is just one part of the equation. A healthy lifestyle that includes regular exercise, stress management, and strong social connections is also crucial for longevity. Now let's explore some tips for longevity. First up, let's talk about caloric restriction. Studies show that reducing calorie intake without malnutrition can extend lifespan in various organisms. Dr. Sinclair suggests that intermittent fasting or time-restricted eating can mimic these effects in humans. Intermittent fasting typically involves eating within a specific time window, such as eight hours, and fasting for the remaining 16 hours. This helps reduce calorie intake and gives your body time to repair and rejuvenate. Another tip from Dr. Sinclair is to include polyphenols in your diet. These are compounds found in foods like berries, dark chocolate, and green tea. Polyphenols help activate longevity pathways in your cells. Resveratrol, a specific type of polyphenol found in red wine and grapes, has been shown to activate sirtuins, the so-called longevity genes. While moderation is key, incorporating sources of resveratrol can be beneficial. Let's focus on the types of foods recommended by Dr. Sinclair. A plant-based diet rich in vegetables, fruits, nuts, and whole grains is highly encouraged. These foods are packed with nutrients and antioxidants that combat aging and support overall health. Incorporating healthy fats is also essential. Dr. Sinclair highlights the importance of omega-3 fatty acids found in foods like fish, flax seeds, and walnuts. These fats have anti-inflammatory properties and support brain health. Protein intake is another important factor. Dr. Sinclair advises reducing animal protein consumption and focusing more on plant-based proteins. This shift can lower the risk of age-related diseases and support longevity. What do you think about Dr. Sinclair's approach to diet and longevity? Are you ready to make some changes to your diet? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe for more tips on healthy living and scientific breakthroughs. Until next time, stay healthy and keep thriving.